Hello, I'm Martin Delaney. Today I'm going to show you how to use Automator on Mac OS X to simplify your stage or studio setup. Yeah, I'm sorry, this is Mac only. This is a really awesome way to get a fast, consistent setup. So if you have a routine that you find yourself doing every time you open up your studio or every time you go on stage for a live set, this would be very good for you. So let's start at the end so we can see what we're aiming at today. Let's click that and see what happens. So this is Automator running. I'm not going to touch the computer at all. All of this is happening from just that one click. We've got an ad hoc network being created and named. We've got a grid connector opening. Ableton Live is opening with a particular live set that I want to use. The display brightness will go up shortly. System volume has been maxed. Reason is opening now, after a short pause, a programmed pause. Then we're going to have an announcement. Ableton setup is ready. Then finally live starts playing on its own. Then after a short break, the EQ mids on the EQ3 and the master track get killed. And then we'll have a look at how all of this was put together. So Automator is an application that's included in the applications folder in every Mac. It's designed to let you create workflows that run off a single application icon. It's quite simple to use and very handy if you have a stage or studio setup that needs two or more applications or utilities to run, or if you have any other repetitive tasks that you want to avoid. Automator is drag and drop. You don't have to know anything about coding. You can just find the item you want to add and put it in the timeline here in descending order. The first one is an Apple script that I found online to create an ad hoc network and to give it a specific name. The second one launches a grid connector app which I need to talk to the grid controller app running on my iPad. That's also why we need the Wi-Fi network. It's all about making life easier. All of the files used in this walkthrough will be available for download by the way so you don't have to recreate all of this stuff from scratch. This one locates my live set. Some of these are dependent on keeping the same file path for everything. So it's a good idea not to move things around too much after you've made your application, after you've made your automator workflow. You should bear that in mind with the files that you're gonna download from us because you'll need to change the file locations for, to make those work. This one locates a live set anyway, as I was saying. This one opens a live set that was just located. Then we have a program, the pause, and that's to help us with a rewire relationship. We'll come back to that in a minute. And really it goes on from there. So, so just to save some time, let's skip ahead to the finished thing and have a closer look at that. So here's my finished automator workflow. We already talked about some of these at the beginning. So you can click here to unfold each workflow item. You can also control click or right click on these to rename them, which is very useful once you start working with long workflows. This top one is the Apple script we talked about earlier. Then we're launching that grid connector. We're getting a live set. You can option click to unfold them all at once in a typical Mac OS style. The get command just kind of finds the file that you're about to apply an action to. Then we open the finder items, in that case that means opening the live set that we just found. Then we have the pause I talked about, that's because to get a rewire relationship between live and reason, there has to be it has to be clear that live opens first, so I found the reason was opening a bit too soon. Maybe 20 seconds is a bit excessive, that might depend on your setup. Then we've got another get specified finder items because we want to do the same thing with our reason file. 
Remember what I said here about path names. If you move anything after setting all this up, you might run into problems. Then we're opening that item. Then we have another pause because we're going to wait for reason to finish opening before we do anything else. Otherwise it just bounces up and down in the dock, screaming for attention. Set computer volume to max. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I love it that you can do stuff like this with Automator. There's another Apple script, another one I got from somewhere online. We can set a value here for the display brightness, but I just like to have it maxed out for my live shows. My favorite one possibly, get specified text. You can type some text in here and Automator will read it using one of the regular Mac voices, which you specify here in the speak text action. You might have to use some phonetic spelling to get words to come out the way you expect them to come out. Here we're going to quit system preferences because we're done with that. Launch application. It looks like we're launching live again, but really what's happening is you can use this command just to bring an open application back to the front to make it the active frontmost application, which I need to do for this one. Watch me do. I created this by hitting the record button at the top right there. So again, we've got a click to bring life to the front just to make sure it's right where we want it. Then we type the letter P, which I've assigned to launch a clip using key map mode in my live set. Then we have another pause. This one is so the live set will run for a while with the audio coming in from Reason as well via rewire. Then after 12 seconds, which is a pretty random choice by me, the EQ3, which is in my master track in my live set, will have its mid kill switch tripped. You can test your workflow at any time by clicking the play button up here in the top right. If you're using a very long chain of events, it might actually be easier to break the list up into smaller sections. And then when it's all done, go to the file menu and save it as an application. This is really awesome because it behaves just like a regular Mac application. You can give it a custom icon, custom name, and you can even put it into the dock next to your other regular Mac OS X applications. There's so much potential for this, especially at the end there where I've left it with live kind of running and controlling its own effects. Because we know now that we can send computer keyboard characters to live, you know that we've already mapped with key map mode. We can, well, there's a huge amount of things we can control in live. I mean, if you were to mix follow actions with these live clips, you could have automator configure, launch and play a totally randomized live set that stops after a specific number of hours or minutes has passed. So maybe we'll come back and give you some further examples of using Automator with live key map mode. Maybe we'll go a bit further into it, but that should be enough to think about for now. There's a lot of stuff there. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.